Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive and oh, I just love living. <laughs> so I I love living and I've got a, a, a life-giving message for you today. So I'm excited about that. But first, I want to tell you, we have something super cool coming up. And if you're not a part of it, you're going to have major FOMO. We have the Make Peace with Food live event happening very soon. Get on board. Go to healyourhunger.com. Buy your ticket now. Buy your ticket. Uh, be a part of this incredible um, event. It is so fun. It's intimate. It's on Zoom. You can join us from anywhere in the world. And you can get help with your relationship with food. Diets don't work. You've probably figured that out by now. Let's make peace with food. Love your body, love your food, love your life. It's time. It's time. So join us. I uh, love to have you. It's it's a three day event. It's online. I have some incredible speakers coming. We have a cooking class. We have movement body movement sessions, um, and we also just have incredible connection and community. So I know. You're great at listening to me on the podcast. I know you're good at that, but take it the next step. Get some community. Be be connected with us in this event. Make peace with food. You can find out about it at healyourhunger.com. And also we'll talk about it in the, in the Secret Sauce group, which is where I'm recording this today. So if you're not a part of the Secret Sauce group, that's a great action step to take. Go to, go to Facebook and type in the Secret Sauce to End Emotional Eating. That's where we record um, these shows. That's where I record them. And, and I, I have guests often and we record there uh, when I have my guest interviews as well. But it's just a great way to get connected, learn what's going on, get the, the, the up-to-date buzz with Heal Your Hunger and just take good action to take care of yourself. That's what this message is about today. Okay, so I can't wait to see you in the Secret Sauce group. I can't wait to see you at the Make Peace with Food event. Um, we got a lot going on. You know, don't miss the boat. Don't don't spend another day hating on yourself, hating on your body, blaming yourself for not being able to follow the diet. Diets don't work. Let yourself off the hook. They don't work. Just just get off that diet track and join us with Heal Your Hunger. Thanks so much. On with the show. Hey, everybody. I'm just dropping in here because I wanted to check in and tell you how I'm doing and, um, and bring you a message that I think is important for today. And uh, if you caught my uh, show last week, I talked about my health scare. And so I'm here to say I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm doing great. Um, I'm healthy. I feel great have had no indications that anything should have, could have, um, you know, did happen. It's crazy. I, it feels like a, it was a dream. So, um, but I know it wasn't. So uh, anyway, I'm very grateful that I'm feeling great and um, yeah, still living my best life, but I have learned some things and I am in action. And that's what I want to talk about today. You know, um, when I was at the emergency room after having a TIA, which is a mini stroke, uh, no damage to the brain, but uh, looks like a, a stroke, acts like a stroke, smells like a stroke. <laughs> Everybody treats it like a stroke. Thank goodness at the emergency room. Um, but it wasn't a stroke. It was um, uh, what they call it, uh, TIA. Um, and anyway, it was an, enough to get my attention for sure. Now I know what it's like to have a stroke for sure. My whole left side wasn't working, scary. Um, but since then, you know, uh, I've had to get different tests done. I've had to start, you know, picking up stones, turning them over and finding out what the hell happened. And so far, nothing, nothing's turned up, which means I have to keep, turning over stones. And my message today is about being your best advocate because I have to keep advocating for myself. I don't have, you know, when you're in the emergency room, they're taking care of a lot of things. They're on it. You know, they take it really seriously. Thank goodness. 
And then once they realize it's not a stroke, they don't take things as seriously. They move on to other patients and you're just hanging out waiting for some news. Um, but finally I got out of there and, um, and now it's, it's like, I'm totally, uh, advocating for myself and getting tests done. They did order some tests. I've chased those tests. I've gotten another doctor, um, uh, more of a functional medicine doctor that I wanted to ha- talk to about this, get his angle on things. I've talked to a friend of mine who's a hormone specialist um, and Dr. Michelle Sands. She's going to be on my podcast soon. And so I've, I've done some different things to try to uh, figure out what the hell happened to me. And, um, I just have to say, it feels really good to be my own advocate. Like I went today and got some tests done and nobody's doing this for me. Nobody's, you know, the thing about life is that we're the ones who have to take care of ourselves. Nobody can take care of us for us, right? Nobody has to wake up in our bodies. Nobody has to put on our pants, (laughs) For, for the most part, we get to do that on our own. Um, nobody knows what it feels like to be in our own genes um, and and uh, what that experience is. Nobody takes our medications for us as adult women um, and men. We have to take care of ourselves. And that's a hard thing if you're in that dark spiral downward of emotional eating, binge eating, hating on yourself, hating your weight, you know, hiding out um, my experience with being a binge eater and having gained 50 pounds and lived in a overweight body for many years, an obese body. Uh, I know that darkness. And I know that when you stop taking care of yourself, it, it devolves quickly. You fall down that rabbit hole of lacking self-care. I mean, I would remember when I was in binge mode, I wouldn't feel like taking a shower. I didn't want to take a shower because it hurt to feel what I, it hurt to, you know, after I binge, I was not a puker. Okay. I was not bulimic. I was an eater, a binger. I ate large quantities of food when I was binging. And then I wore it. I just wore it on my body and it was super painful. So I am here to say that I know that darkness and I know that with eating comes other forms of self-destruction, not flossing my teeth, not brushing my teeth sometimes, not washing my pants sometimes because they would stretch, I mean, they would get tight and I wouldn't fit in them, um, not making appointments, uh, not certainly not going out with friends, not being social, um, not being sexually active or interested in sex. Um, pushing away any kind of attention and love. I mean, there's a lot that goes into the life of an emotional eater. There's a lot of experiences we have that we don't talk about, right? We don't talk about this stuff. We just talk about, oh, I want to lose weight or, oh, I'm trying to find the right diet. And we're all in our heads about it. We don't look at the dark underbelly of what emotional eating involves. And it involves a lot of self-negation, a lot of self-hatred. I mean, if you're eating crapola foods, you know, processed foods, high carb, high cholesterol, uh, sugar laden foods, if, if that's what your diet consists of, when you fall off the wagon, you are destroying yourself. I'm going to tell it like it is, folks. (laughs) I have a new lease on life. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Live every life full out, every day of my life full out and tell you the truth. So the truth is you are destroying yourself when you eat crappy foods, when you know it's hurting you. What's that about? It's not about finding the right diet. Hello. It's about finding out why you hate yourself and you're treating yourself like shit. That's what we got to take a look at. And that is, thankfully, that's what I do. That's what I, that's where I live. That's what I'm all about. Because I know diets don't work. And I know if you just go on a diet and lose weight, you're probably, you know, statistically speaking, you will gain it back in no time. And you'll be on the struggle roller coaster ride again in no time, unless you go deeper, unless you heal, unless you become your best advocate and you want to advocate for yourself. It takes self love to advocate for yourself. And it takes advocating yourself 
in order to love yourself because we have to act our way into right thinking. Self-love is a very nebulous term. The only way to love yourself is by self-loving acts, okay? What are self-loving acts? Going to your doctor's appointment, taking your medications, taking your supplements, going out for a walk, you know, getting a hug, asking for help when you need it, setting boundaries on your time. These are acts of self-love. This is how you come to love yourself. So advocating for yourself when you're in that terrible place of self-hatred is hard. And, and then self-negation goes on, missing uh, appointments, um, not taking care of ourselves, not eating healthy, not making sure there's good food in the refrigerator. These are all self-negating acts. So I'm here to talk about self-advocacy because nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody is going to, I mean, wouldn't it be nice? And I know, you know, my clients have lovely spouses. Okay. And I've always had good, good, um, good men around me. I've only had one spouse, but I, I've, I've been blessed to have people around me who cared about me and would do anything for me. My former husband would take a bullet for me. And my current guy just loves me to pieces. He just, he just adores me. So I'm very blessed in that way, but it doesn't matter because I still have to take care of me. Nobody will do it for me and nobody will do it for you. We just, we're not children anymore. We're adults. We have to be our best advocates. So it felt good to go out and go to the doctors. I spent the afternoon trying to get a test that I needed an ultrasound and um, everything came back positive. Thank goodness. But I had to just push myself to do these things because I got better things to do, <laughs> you know, um, I got work to do, but I need to take care of myself. I need to do everything I can to make sure I'm healthy and make sure I stay that way for decades, many decades to come. And the only way that's going to happen is if I take care of myself. It doesn't just happen. Good health doesn't just happen. And the problem is, uh, as emotional eaters, we put off good health. We put off healthy decisions. We say, I'll do it another time, or I'll get help next year, or I'll, all these different things that we do, you know, to, to put off what we need to do for ourselves. We have to do this for ourselves. And it's not easy to do, but don't put it off. Don't put it off and don't act like you'll be fine until a later date, because I know that that's, that's foolish. That's foolishness. So what can you do today to advocate for yourself? What can you do today to advocate for your health? What can you do to love on yourself? What positive action can you take? Don't sweep it under the rug. I can't do that now. I had a scare and I'm every day working to be healthier and to, and I'm already super healthy. Thank God, by the grace of God and the program I teach other people, thank goodness I'm super healthy, but still I get to do everything I can do to be healthy and be healthier. Okay. So that's what I'm up to. Um, what are you doing to be healthy and healthier? Don't skimp on it. Don't put it off. Don't blow it off. Don't blow you off. Be your best advocate. That's that's my message. It's pretty it's pretty straightforward. You know, I'm here to just give you a nudge. Give you a nudge. Take the action. I have some really cool stuff coming up. I have an event coming up in three weeks. So to help you make peace with food, be at that event. Cancel everything else. Be there. It's online. Super easy. You know, what can you do to take charge of your health and advocate for yourself instead of putting it off? We cannot put our health off any longer. We can't put self-love off any longer. We don't know how much time we have and we're foolish when we act like we, we'll do it later and we'll be fine. We don't know that. <laughs> we don't know that. I don't know that. So we have to push ourselves to take that action, to advocate for ourselves, to make that appointment, get the help you need, ask the questions you need answers to. Don't blow yourself off. I know you're good at taking care of other people. It's time to take care of yourself. Be your best advocate. Nobody else can do it for you. 
And nobody else will do the suffering for you either when you don't advocate for yourself. That's why we have to do it for ourselves. I don't want to live in misery. I don't want to spend one day not living my best life, not living in love, not living in joy, not living in health. I don't want any part of that. So I got to push myself to do what I can to be as healthy as possible. So I'm just here to um, hopefully empower you to do the same thing. It's time, friends. No BS. It's time. What are you going to do today? I want you to put it in the comments. I want you to put in the comments what one action you're going to take one act of self-love and self-advocacy you're going to take to be healthier and happier today. That's all we got. All we got is today. Thank you so much. I love you so much. I'll see you later. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.